Hey, everybody. Get on in here. We got some stuff to talk about. Let's see if I get my pages in order. <clears throat> got a little phlegm going on right now. I ate a piece of cheese, which I know better, but I did it anyway. <coughs> Pardon me. That was awful. That was awful. I got water, though. Get you some water or some hot tea. That's what I probably need is a cup of hot tea. And some salt, but I don't have any salt in here. That would be a good thing to get, to put some salt in here. Salt shaker. Anyway, y'all come on in. We got lots to talk about. I got a bunch of questions Liz has sent me. <clears throat> we have a new month starting tomorrow. Today is the last day of February. And it's not leap year, so we don't have a 29th. Last day of February, and we have, um, it's been a busy day for me. Um, my puppy dog had to go to the vet. She had to get her shots, her rabies vaccines for three years. So I'm going to put it on my calendar, <clears throat> today's date, and I'm going to repeat it every year that she needs to get shots in three years. Her shots, her three year it's good for three years so that's how I'm gonna remind myself put it on the calendar so and every year when I get a new calendar I'm just gonna transfer that over so this is year one year two and I'm gonna put the date she's supposed to have shots again so 2019 20 2021 she gets shot again yep three years 19 to 20 to 21 no it's 22 <clears throat> 2022 she gets another shot and somebody um told me how to do this the other day well uh, uh, last year sometime she says when she does a repair on an appliance like she gets a new dishwasher she writes down on her calendar the year she got the dishwasher and you know why why she got the dishwasher because the calendar is big enough to do all that how cool is that having a calendar with big enough spaces to be able to do all that and and we are down to a few of them so get them now if you haven't gotten one you need to get it you need to get it because <clears throat> we're going to be running out just any any day now can't believe we lasted till february y'all just gave up on them and uh, maybe uh who knows we also have <clears throat> our multi wand. This is a great tool. Now, those of you who have multi wands, I want you to grab your multi wand up. And while we're doing our show today, I want you to run around the house and clean stuff with your multi wand. Venetian blinds, ceiling fans, you name it. <clears throat> I want you to. I want you to make a list of everything you've cleaned with your multi wand and send it to me to flylady at flylady.net with multi wand in the subject line. So, folks, check it out <clears throat> and grab a tool. I mean, we had somebody grab the multi wand in a testimonial. I don't know if it's going out today or tomorrow, but he ran around. The, they have a rental house that they it's a vacation rental and. <clears throat> They rent it out to people, and he ran around the house using this thing on everything from the registers for the heating unit and the cooling unit, closet doors, you name it. He cleaned them with this. And this sale, which is $7.97, ends tomorrow. <clears throat> it ends tomorrow. So get yours now. It's been on sale since January. So. We've had it on a very, very long time. Okay. Tomorrow is March 1st. And it's the first day of a habit that I hope sticks with you for the rest of your life. 
And that habit is uh, getting dressed to lace up shoes. Now I have on my favorite purple shirt today. This is, I've had this shirt since Fly Lady started practice. Somebody in Ohio made, made them for us. So we had the Fly Lady logo on them and, and it's sort of a comfort shirt. And we, we had to get the dog in the car this morning and she was shaking and she threw up and you know, the do it now principle kicks in. She threw up in the back seat of the truck and I have this tray underneath the back seat. Well, luckily it missed the tray, which it should have gone in it, but it went down under the tray. When we got home, we had to clean it all up. It was a mess, but guess what? I had paper towels in my truck. I had Windex in my truck. I was prepared and I had on not so great clothes that I didn't mind if I got them messed up, it wouldn't be bad. But the habit we're going to practice for March is getting up and getting dressed to lace up shoes. Now I have a uniform. I like black pants, a black top most of the time, unless it's springtime. And then I get out my blues. I like my aquas and, and, and light blues. In the wintertime, I like my reds. So I have a uniform of the things that I like to wear. Black pants, black shirt. I like in the summertime, I'll usually wear a tank and I can wear a shirt over that. But I, I have this uniform and it's real easy to pick my clothes out because they're all in my bathroom in a basket ready to go because my laundry's done. Total done. You know, it's just wonderful knowing that every, every item of clothing you have is clean. And you can get dressed at a moment's notice. So getting dressed to lace up shoes. Now this is the most important part. Some of you don't like to wear lace up shoes. Some of you don't like shoes. You want to know why you don't like shoes? It's because you've never had a shoe, pair of shoes that fit you well. I even had a pair of boots made because I have a high instep on my foot and no boot would fit me. I have, I have big calves and boots didn't feel right. So getting a pair of shoes that fits you well is going to change everything. Now, why don't you go to the shoe store? This is your, this is going to be your job this month. You'll spend money on shoes for everybody else. Sorry. <clears throat> I remember my little sister Leanne. She had um, a pronate on her foot and she would run off the edge of her shoes, that the heel of her shoes. And she didn't have shoes. Mother didn't buy her shoes. Her shoes would get too tight. Patty's shoes would get too tight. And we were growing children. And But mother had shoes. Mother loved shoes. Mother had lots of shoes. So it's, it makes me sad. But I know you're just the opposite of that. That you, you will sacrifice everything for your children. You will sacrifice everything for them. Where's my pink hanky? And you do that for them. But there comes a time that you need to break down and get yourself a pair of shoes that feel good on your feet. You need this. Because when your feet hurt, and I know because four years ago, I had plantar fasciitis and it was awful. I couldn't walk. When we had Michelle's wedding in, in Vegas, I, I had trouble walking. Um, it was painful and it was because I didn't take care of my feet and at night I would go barefoot. And then I went to a doctor and he said, you gotta wear shoes even when you get out of bed because we have hardwood floors. We don't have any cushioning on our floors. So I started wearing shoes when I get up in the middle of the night. I wear shoes during the day and I wear shoes going to bed at night. 
and it has taken care of my feet. I also treated myself because that's what I do. <laughs> I learned an exercise to do to stretch the that tendon or ligament that's at the bottom of your foot that causes the plantar fasciitis. Every night when I get in bed, and it takes me a while to get in bed because I have these routines but I bend my toes back like this and hold it for a count of 10. And I do both feet that way. And you know, since I started doing that, I don't have any problems anymore. No problems. So getting you a pair of shoes is the most important thing you can do this month. And if you can, get two pairs. So you can swap them out. So you can let one of them, uh, let the inside dry. And I like a pair of shoes that I can wash in the washing machine and I can uh, and take the insoles out. And I wear Brooks. They have a solid, a wide a foot base so that I'm stable. Now let me tell you what I saw this morning. Now this is, this is, this is tough. There was a man, I know he was older than me, at the vet, well, we had to take the dog to the vet, and he had on Crocs. Crocs with socks, but they were the type of Crocs that didn't have a heel on the back. And he walked out of that shoe, trying to take the dog over to the scale and get his dog weighed, at which point he fell flat in front of us. That's not, you don't need to be falling flat on your face because you won't wear a pair of shoes that'll stay on your feet. That's what house shoes do. That's what Crocs do. It is not fun to fall flat on your face in front of people. But what's worse is people break their arms that way. Now I've learned how to fall from fly fishing. When I fall, and I haven't fallen, fallen lately, well I did back in the fall I fell. We were walking over to the neighbor's house. I had a phone in one hand and some soup in another hand. And when I fell, I went like this. <laughs> and I fell forward and I didn't put my arm out. I fell and crunched up in a ball. And I didn't, I didn't get hurt. Or if you feel yourself slipping, just sit down. Just sit down. But don't put your arms out, because that's when you break an arm. You're trying to break your fall. So get a pair of shoes that stay on your feet. Get a pair, pair of shoes that you can um, lace up and that put compression on your feet. A lot of people have feet that swell when they don't have shoes on. When you're pregnant, you need shoes on. If you read Sync Reflection, there's a testimonial in there where a lady was, um, go, they were in a birthing class and they went around the room talking about what empowered them. And every other woman was said, oh, my husband empowers me. Got to this one lady, she says, it's my shoes. It's my lace-up shoes. Because with my lace-up shoes on, my feet don't swell. I think I'll even give birth in my lace-up shoes. So when your feet hurt, you're tired, as somebody said. It makes you feel miserable when your feet hurt. So take care of yourself. If you will spend one week menu planning, you will save enough money to buy you a pair of shoes. Now we had one lady who fought, who bought something called a fit flop. It's really a lace up tennis shoe. And they were on Amazon and she saw the color she wanted, hot pink, imagine that. Hot pink on sale for 30 bucks. So, Get you a pair that feel wonderful on your feet. You, you don't want them with too much cushion because anytime your feet hits, hits a hard surface, you're growing bone. So you need to have a firm shoe on. Not a lot of memory foam, but you need to have a firm shoe. 
I know you're learning stuff you never knew about shoes and and building um, bone mass in your thighs and your legs that when your foot strikes the floor with a, a firm shoe on you're gonna build that bone and and March is also the month that you get your vitamin D levels checked because vitamin D helps to set calcium and you build more bone so it all fits together it really does so let's check our calendars to see what our schedule is for tomorrow that kind of tells you see I knew we're going to the vet today and I needed to put on some older clothes because I'm gonna have a dog all over me and maybe another dog and <clears throat> I'm going to the vet so I put on my old clothes Robert calls them grubbies but I didn't have to be out in public I'm comfortable I'm warm I got my I've got on boots I've got they're not lace-up boots, but they're zip-up boots, and I can't get them off. The reason you lace them up is to keep you from kicking them off. Because I was born in the South. I was raised barefoot, practically, which makes me sad. But I don't have to live that way anymore. I'm smarter. And I have never, ever worn a pair of shoes that hurt my feet. Now, I have a nephew-in-law, my niece Courtney, who's born on my birthday, is married to one of the top orthopedic surgeons in this country. I, I mean, he is one of the best. And he loves it when women wear those wedge shoes and high heels and they turn their ankles and have to have surgery on their ankles. It's not fun. Don't do that to yourself. Wear something that's comfortable. I like a little heel, not much, just a little heel so that I'm not flat footed. Ballet slippers, I can't wear those things to save my life. They cut into the back of my foot. I can't stand it. I don't want anything that hurts my foot. And you know, if you have on something that's comfortable, you know, you're gonna have a better attitude about things. You know, the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Believe it or not, you set the tone in your home for your family. And when you go out into the world, your smile changes people's lives just by you having that new attitude about things, loving others. Now, those of you who are pregnant that aren't wearing shoes, I think you're making a mistake and you need to talk to your doctor because if you wear shoes, you may have to go buy a size that's two sizes bigger, but if you will lace those shoes up, don't go barefoot when you mop. You're like liable to slip down, but lace those shoes up. It causes compression on your foot, which is going to keep your feet from swelling. So there are no excuses. Even people who live in China and Japan and Korea and all, all those other places where they don't allow shoes in the house, it is offensive to be barefoot. So they have a little slipper that they put on. This next habit is going to change your life if you will just practice it. Here I've been on my soapbox for 20 minutes but having a pair of shoes that feel good to your feet is going to change the way you think and your children need to have their shoes on too and you can teach them how to wipe their feet off at the front door or the whatever door you come in so get you a doormat one of those bristledy ones hang up a rubber scrubber by the door so they can scrub their shoes if they're muddy, they can scrub them before they come in the house. Teach them how to take care of their shoes. I have a story to tell about my son, and he's watching. He is watching. And he might post on here. He may still have these shoes. But when he was a little kid, he wanted a pair of Air Jordans, and they were $150.
They were expensive. We didn't have that kind of money to buy him a pair of shoes that he was only going to wear one year. But you know, he worked and he saved his money and he bought those shoes with his own money. He mowed yards. He, he did all kinds of stuff. And he bought those Air Jordans and they had a little pump up tongue on them. When he got married at age, I think he was 24 when he got married, he still had those shoes. No, they didn't fit anymore, but he still had them. And when he came in from school, he would take them off and clean them up. He wouldn't walk through water with them. He took care of those shoes and they looked the they they looked brand new. So buy you a pair of shoes. Teach your children to take care of their shoes. Don't go buy them expensive shoes. If they want them, let them pick them out. And when you're barefoot, that's that's a good one. Whoever this was just right before Anna. When you don't have your shoes on, you're going to break a toe. You're going to fall down a stairs. You're going to, <clears throat> if you break something in your kitchen, I mean, I have broken a Pyrex measuring cup. Do you know how many, how many, uh, what is it called? Uh, slivers of glass that makes. It's crazy. But I had on my shoes and I was able to clean that glass up before my puppy came in there and got hurt able to clean it all up so please take care of your feet and your feet will take care of you just that simple take care of your feet and your feet will take care of you and if when you get dressed to lace up shoes you're not scared to answer the door this morning we had gravel people here bright and early I got up at at 5 56 in the morning that's what time I was born at 5 56 so when I wake up at 5 56 I think it's so funny but we have to take care of ourselves. And this new habit, when you get it, you don't lose it. Because you don't like running around the house in your gown tail. That's what, what my grandmother always called it, my gown tail. Well, I, we've got some questions here. We've got a lot of questions. Liz sent them to me. And I blew them up so I can read them. And still look at you. <laughs> okay. Question number one, I work full time during the day, 40 to 45 hours a week. I have morning and evening routines, but I'm having trouble jumping in where you are. I still have a lot of decluttering to do. I feel like I get home from work, eat dinner and sit down and then it's almost time for bed. What do you suggest? Well, I don't know what you do. I don't know what time you go to work, but I would suggest doing your weekly home blessing one item a day. Or you can do like, like we've been doing this week. Grab your rubber scrubber and run around the house and use this on everything you can think of for two minutes or three minutes in the mornings before you leave for work. Just that fast. Grab your multi wand and run around the house and use it. Or grab your feather duster, run around the house and do it. Grab your mop, run around the house and mop. Three minutes. Spread it over one week. Change your sheets one day. We have a, where is my little, I have a poster that I made for you. And it's, it is in our control journal section of our website and it's weekly home blessing one day at a time. Look at that. Sunday sheets, Monday mop, Tuesday trash, Wednesday wipe the dust, Thursday toss the magazines, Friday floors, get ready for the weekend, Saturday shine the windows and doors. You see? So you can take your purple rag and run around. It's real easy. The tools motivate you and just see what all you can get done. 
it's fast and furious like we did the other day. That was that was a lot of fun. Uh, where did my questions go? There they are. What do you suggest? As far as decluttering, five minutes when you get home from work. Don't spend all day doing it. If you spend more than five minutes, you're, you're not going to want to do it again. So run around the house and do a 27 fling boogie as fast as you can. Grab your um, declutter kit, run around the house and gather up 27 items to throw away and then 27 items to give, give away. And there you've done it. Five minutes tops. But don't feel like you're behind. That's your perfectionism. It took me nine months to establish one habit each month before I felt like I was getting somewhere. But getting dressed to lace up shoes empowered me every single day. Next question. All of my floors are hard surface. There is no way just sweeping or damp mopping once a week could keep the floors anywhere close to clean. I have rugs at the entrance. Is there anything else I should do or should I just expect the floors will always get messy and need daily attention? Well, if you have critters, you are going to have dust bunnies. It's just how it is. They're going to come in and out and they're going to have footprints. We, uh, Justin and I were trying out a new mop the other day and I had mopped the kitchen and the front, the entrance of our house and he was coming over to pick up Molly and I let him play with it in the living room. Mopping is, doesn't take long. You can do it in three minutes. You are begrudging yourself a beautiful, beautiful floors because you won't take three minutes and run your mop over it. Now who's that hurting? You're, you're determined not to clean, but what's that do? It makes you feel bad. So just get the mop out and do it. Once a day if you have to, or I like to use a dust mop too. You can use this as a dust mop and just run around the house as fast as you can. And I've got videos on YouTube of me. Just look up uh, dust bunnies. And, and you will see me doing, um, I don't know what that, that gif messes up my news feed, y'all. It stops everything. So get you a mop. We got a great one on sale right now, $29.94 for the mop, a handle, and two more of these rags, um, two more of the mop cloths. Use one wet, use one dry. Hey, you get your floors done and your house is going to look wonderful. And for your, um, for your throw rugs, gather up your carpet sweeper and in three minutes you can have every rug in your house done. Every single throw rug in your house can be done. Okay, how will the emails benefit me? Let me tell you. If you want to get if you want to jump on the bandwagon and stay on the bandwagon, commit to reading our emails. But you want to know what that's going to do? It's immersion. I'm getting in your head. I'll be swimming around in there. And you'll be saying things that are coming out of my mouth instead of the negativity that's floating around in there. I'm going to change the way you think about stuff. It's, we call it fly washing. And the testimonials are going to help you to see a different way to do things. My morning musing, my ask fly lady question are all a big part of what we do. So try it. Try it for a week. Get my emails. Read them. There's a morning musing. There's an Ask Fly Lady question. There is a 
habit of the month that talks about our getting dressed to lace up shoes this month this past month we've been decluttering there is a test of fly which is always a great testimony about how people are using the system i send out a couple of more emails about um, different tools because without you purchasing something from us we'd have to shut the doors and i wouldn't be here every day it would be hard If you will just commit to reading those emails, getting dressed to lace up shoes every day, you're going to see a change. Change in your whole attitude. And they will help you. Okay, next question. Our water is extremely hard. Even though I use a microfiber cloth to sh clean the sinks and counters, I still get slight spider web of calcium deposits. And I don't like to use toxic chemicals. Help. Well, I know, I know the issue. And I've had a leak in my faucet in my bathroom. And I really didn't know it until Robert caught it. He was filling up the, the cat's water bowl. And I took a single edged razor blade and behind where the water had dried and I hadn't noticed it, it was a calcium deposit. And I just took that little, uh, on a granite counter and just took that film right off. Now, calcium vinegar works. Vinegar works. Apple cider vinegar, white vinegar, it doesn't matter. Take your purple rag and soak it good with vinegar and wipe it down. And you'd be surprised how much it get up because it will take care of it. it. Okay, the next question. Is there a substitute for using bleach to do the initial clean and, and shine my sink? Yes. Comment barkeeper's friend, anything like that that you can use as a cleanser, baking soda, all of that stuff works. And if it's really bad, it needs to be sterilized. So a couple of drops of um, bleach will help sterilize it. But you can use a cleanser. Don't mix um, bleach and... What's the other thing you don't mix with bleach? And ammonia. Don't mix bleach and ammonia. Like Windex. Always rinse between steps. What is the best way to store medical supplies in a way that looks nice? Well, I just get a first aid kit. And some people like to put their medications in a basket. But I have a three-doored, four-foot medicine cabinet. And that's where I keep everything. And when I get too much stuff that I don't have any room in there, I declutter it. That's all I'm going to keep. I hate the smell of bleach too. But I use it sometimes. A basket works, especially if you have a little box of stuff. But I want to be able, if I need Benadryl, I don't want to search for it. I want to be able to reach in and grab the Benadryl because I'm having an allergic reaction to something. Don't so much worry about it looking nice. I mean, you can get on Pinterest and find all kinds of ways to store medications. But if you need things under lock and key, and a lot of medications you need to store in a safe because if you have oxycodone and stuff like that. You don't want people stealing that stuff. You don't want to be responsible for making somebody an addict. Get rid of it. Take, it, take old medications back to your drugstore. Okay, next question. In the, K, in the Cure for Chaos book, you mentioned that your, that your bathroom, you keep a basket full of hand towels and another basket to drop them in once they're used. Would you speak a little more about the way you store them and how you use them? Although I like the idea in my mind, it would seem like I'm adding clutter to my countertop. 
This is where a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, I collect fish. I like fish anything because I used to fly fish. And I have this basket that looks like a fish. I think it's, used, it's supposed to hold a wine bottle or something. I got it from Avon a long time ago. I don't know where I got it, but I've had it forever. I take my white washcloths, I fold them in half. Let me show you. I fold them in half and then I roll them just like this, 10 or 12 at a time. And I stick them in the basket. Real cute. And then on my wall, I have taken two command hooks and I have my fishing creel. Yes, I used to use it. I would put fish in it. It's a basket. And it's like a mini hamper. And when I dry my hands, I usually use one a day to dry my hands. And I, at night, I'll dry my hands for the last time. I'll wipe out my sink and wipe down my counters and lay the, the damp white washcloth on the fishing creel underneath my calendar and let it dry overnight and then I'll stick it in there because I don't like anything to get musty smelling. It drives me nuts. And there you have it. I have a basket for them. It's a cute little basket and then a basket to put them in that's not on my counter. And it, it works. You can clean out from under your bathroom counter and have a little hamper under there. It could be a little trash can that you put them in. Doesn't have to be on the counter. But it's wonderful and it keeps from spreading germs. It really keeps from spreading germs. Even though it's just me and Robert, we never get sick. Because when we come into the house at night, we wash our hands after we've been doing something. Well, baking soda and vinegar can be a, a, a solution to clean sinks. It's got, it, it'll get rid of the calcium deposits and if it's in a stainless steel sink, use a little um, little SOS pad works too. If you could purchase only one Fly Lady tool, tool which one would you choose? Hmm. Probably the calendar because the calendar keeps your life on track. You menu plan, you keep all your appointments there, you keep your kids' ball games. It's big enough for everything. I, I chart my weight and keep up with my walking up and down the stairs, which I've already done nine sets today of going up and down, up and down, up and down. I got them all done by 10 o'clock in the morning. They were done. I didn't start till 8.30. Set my timer and every 15 minutes I get up and do two, two sets. Up and down and up and down. And that way, I've, I, they're out of the way. I don't, have to, I don't have to feel the burden of I've got to do 12, 10 tonight. You know, I've done a little every hour and it works well for me. But the one, that one fly lady tool will be the calendar. But if you want something to clean with, the cleaning one is a purple rag. This thing, I wash dishes with it. I keep one in the bathtub to um, as a washcloth. I, I have one in my car that I just cleaned up dog erp with. Ugh. And... Keep one with me everywhere. This tool is amazing. Third thing would be the rubber scrubber. And they're on BOGO right now. Buy one, get one free. And you can get a 20% discount on the purple rags. So folks, the tools are, they motivate you. Like you wouldn't believe. Just pick one up and see how, see what you can do with it. Try it. You're going to be really surprised. 
How do you keep up with basic routines? Look after yourself when you and your family are sick. It's a tough time of year. Well, here's the deal. If you can get out of bed, you have to be dressed to lace up shoes. No ifs, ands, or buts. The code is, for the 20% code, is ADVICE, A-D-V-I-C-E, ADVICE 351. ADVICE 351. And the Chaos Cure is on Amazon. It's not on my website, so don't go to my website looking for it. But when you're sick, you've got to be up and dressed because you got to take care of the family. I mean, you're going to be up anyway, so you might as well. If you can't get out of bed, then you have a pass on not getting dressed. But if you have to get up and take care of the rest of the family, you need to be dressed. And then you've got to just pace yourself. You take care and then lay on the couch. You may have to put some puppy pads out. <laughs> I've got some leftover puppy pads for when when the dog has issues, but they're left over and they'd be great for absorbing up messes and stuff. Fix yourself a day at the beach bag with um, things that the, that you need to keep the children hydrated and you hydrated, like Gatorades of clear colors, not not reds and blues. You don't want to be tossing up blues. And, and if you need, if you're really sick and you need to stay in the bathroom, then put some puppy pads under you or right at your face. It, nothing feels better when you're sick than to lay on a cold tile floor. There is just nothing better than that for me anyway. It just, I know I'm not going to fall off the toilet. It's, so I get down low when I'm sick. The, um. A blow-up mattress helps. You can put it in the tub if you have. If the kids are really sick and you need to sleep, and they need to sleep in, in in a open bathtub with no water in it. So, put together your beach bag, and have all this stuff. Have some popsicles in the refrigerator. Some some um, electrolyte popsicles, and then that way they're gonna have something that's gonna help them. And they'll like it because the cold, and if you feel like you got to throw up and you just have hot stomach acid, drink a cup of cool water with one ice cube in it. And that coolness coming back just coats your throat. So if you can get up, you need to be dressed and having this stuff in the house so you don't have to go spread the germs around everywhere. Put together your day at the beach kit. I, I call it that because it's a fun fun way to think about. It. And there'll be this stuff coming on sale before you know it. Getting ready for summer. So get you a clear beach bag. You probably got one in the closet now. Get some um, chicken broth and, and Campbell's soup cans and put in there so you don't use it for anything else. You don't want to you don't want to ruin your supply. So put together you this beach bag or somebody called it a sick bag i have one that i carry with me i have had food poisoning on the road and it is not fun not to have what you need it really isn't you need something to stop major diarrhea which i don't like but i still have it in the event that somebody else in the traveling party has gets sick so folks take care of uh take care of yourself and putting together that beach bag is all about loving you that's what Fly Lady is all about is learning how to love yourself, preparing a little bit for the future. I mean, when I learned about getting dressed to lace up shoes, I was depressed. I had gone into treatment and the two girls that were my roommates, one was a stewardess and I think the other one was a teacher. Their job was to give me a makeover. They had to fix my stringy hair, put makeup on me help me get dressed in something that looked decent. And lo and behold, I carried myself differently. It's all about changing the way you think here. What's the question about recycling and recycle or donate? 
What do you mean when decluttering? Well, some of the stuff is trash, Jan. Some of it's just plain trash you have laying out. And don't worry about recycling until you get a handle on what's going on in your house. Your house is not a landfill. Your house is not a recycle center waiting for the perfect place to get rid of this stuff. You've got to get control over it. And if you can donate things, that's great. But do not donate trash to charities because it costs them a fortune to get rid of it. So don't do that. You, get, you give away the good stuff, but don't give them trash. If it's not worth holding on to for you, it may not be worth it to give it to a charity. So be responsible with your giving. Don't just donate trash. Okay, how do you keep up with basic routine? Oh, that, I just did that one. Okay, what is the best way to clean wood furniture? I know you're not going to believe me. The best way to clean wood furniture is a damp purple rag. It really does a great job. It gets in the grooves. It gets all the dust out. Feather duster works too, but if you've got two years of dust on this furniture and lots of smudges and stuff, you need a purple rag. You need a purple rag. And it will make your furniture look great. I don't like uh, spray pledge or anything like that. I can't stand that stuff. But you can get um, a lemon oil that works pretty good. And put some of that on a cloth and wipe your furniture down after you've gotten the dirt off. After you've gotten the dirt off. What is the fastest way to get rid of a terrible cold with awful chills? Is there something to make me feel better? You're not going to believe it. But when I have the chills, I want to hug a cup. And sometimes it's got tomato soup in it. Robert hates it, but I like tomato soup. Or a cup of chicken broth or bone broth. And I like to get into a bathtub of hot water. Especially if I'm sick. Now, I tell Robert I'm getting in the tub of hot water if I'm really sick, which I never, get, I never get sick. Knock on wood. I am never sick. But when I have the chills and there's nothing that's going to get me warm, a tub full of hot water do it faster than anything. And Robert will build a fire and I, that fire and getting in the tub. And I think what it does, if you have a little fever and you get in the tub, you're going to raise your body temperature. And fever is a tool. Fever for me is a tool. Now, you might want to check with your doctor. But I like to spike my fever. And I know it's probably wrong, but I do it. And the next day, I'm well. Yeah, next day, I am well. And I take vitamin C. And I take magnesium. Magnesium. I've got a magnesium. Um, I don't have any in here, but it's it's called Calm, and it comes in little packets, or you can do it by the teaspoon. You can put a teaspoon of that in some hot water, and it's it's comforting. It really is. You can get it in a raspberry lemon flavor, and it's great. I I like Vic Sav too. I I liked warm cloths of Vic Sav on on the chest. I don't know how anybody melts a purple rag. I have no clue how you would melt a purple rag. Elderberry is good. Yep, it's good if you've got a virus. So vitamin C, I, take, I drink a lot of vitamin C in my water. I, I drink about probably 10,000 units, uh, micro units of vitamin C every day. So I'm really never sick. 
and it does work. <clears throat> I think that's all the questions I've got here. Yep, so tomorrow, tonight is the start of your new habit. You're going to pick out your clothes for tomorrow. And I like to do it when I'm getting in the bathtub. That's where I take my clothes off. That's where I keep my clothes. I pick my outfit out. I lay it on, a, on, a, on the top of the basket so I'm ready to go. You can put it all on a coat hanger and hang it on a hook. But there you have it. My clothes are picked out. I know what the weather's going to be tomorrow. If I'm going to be out and about, I'm, if I'm going to need my raincoat, and I sort of set everything on a launch pad if I've got to be out. I mean, we had a little launch pad going today with the, with the dog's um, notices on what shots he had, she had to have. And we're good. N picking out your clothes is going to make it easier in the morning for you to get dressed to lace up shoes. I like to keep my shoes in front of a heat vent so that they're warm when I put them on. I don't know why, but I like it. It's, it's a little thing I do to take care of me. It's, it's, it's like pampering myself. It also, if, if my shoes, if my feet have gotten sweaty in, in my boots, then it dries them out. That's one thing about changing shoes every other day. It's good for you. I don't know what everybody's saying, but folks, it's been a good day. We've gotten a lot of stuff done today. And uh, Patty, what's that book we like? Doctor Yourself, I think is the name of the book. It's on Amazon. It is a wonderful book on learning about vitamin C and what it can do in your life. And it, it's just... It's phenomenal. I've, I've read it three or four times. And it, you, I just learned something new every, every day. Every single day. Wash your hands when you come into the house. That's why I have lots of washcloths to dry my hands with. Oh, it's, there's a website too. Doctor Yourself. There it is. Hey, it's been a good day. Grab up a tool and run around the house and do something. And then send me your list. Tomorrow is the last day for the multi-wand. Get it while we have. I may talk to, to Michael about leaving it up until Monday. Some people have kind of asked us to do that because they don't get paid until um, the 3rd. So I might, I might see if I can do that but check and see if you've missed getting it tomorrow you might check on Saturday and Sunday see if it's still up because I don't want to disappoint anybody y'all have a good evening it's Thursday night tomorrow is Friday what are you doing for date night think about it what are you gonna do for date night and tomorrow's the day we clean out our purses and we clean out our cars and I cleaned out my car today. Yeah, I did, because I had to. Because some little dog got car sick because we fed her this morning. We probably shouldn't have fed her before we went to town. Was well, not a good idea. I'm not going to do that again. We'll not feed her when we have to put her in the car again. And she was just upset. She just, last time she went to the vet, they didn't do her too well. And I think she remembered. I think she remembered she got fixed and they drugged her pretty bad. I love you all. Take care of yourself. I want you to love yourself and getting a pair of shoes that fit your feet well. I mean, don't suffer wearing shoes that are the wrong size. You probably don't even know what size you wear because you're still thinking about what you wore in high school. Two babies later, your feet change. They really do. See y'all later. Bye.